Hello, everybody. Welcome to Monday, the 16th of October, 2017, with me, Doc Eon, and Crown here, who is a venture that I finished this week. And I have to be honest up front and say that this is the only mini I finished this week. I've done a bunch of work on other stuff, but nothing completed. I've simply prioritized other activities apart from painting. Uh, like finishing uh, up watching Critical Role. <laughs> Spent hours on hours on watching YouTube. Um, but anyway, we, we cleared up this guy. Um, now, he's nothing special. I... <sighs> Honestly, these kinds of miniatures from GW... The reason it took me so long to finish is that I find them very boring. Because they are mostly just paint by numbers and not even good ones. I mean, it's it's clear which, which fields are supposed to be small patches of color, and there's not a lot of shading or highlighting you can do within that. It's just color, 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 and the contrast between the colors provides the variety, and that makes the eye satisfied. But it's not even good paint by numbers because there are a lot of places where it's clear that, for instance, the rim of the shoulder pad and of each plate of armor has some sort of trim on it, which is should be painted differently than the main portion. And I mean, the, I, I say main portion, but I mean, there's so much trim that sometimes the so-called main portion is actually a minor portion. Um, but the, the line between like the knee pad and the trim or, or, or the boot and the trim, or the shoulder pad and the trim, is not always very clear in the sculpt, or maybe it's the casting, not sure. Um, so I, you know, I had to look at reference photos to try to figure out what is what. The part that isn't exactly paint by numbers is the cloak, and anything that has like these folds and this sweep is a little bit more interesting to, to shade and highlight. Um, so that was. A little bit of a challenge, actually. Um, I, I still haven't come down on how much... I mean, some people highlight a cloak like this very smoothly and, 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 and you know, gradual transitions. Others go for sharp edges, like, like the crease would be a, a really stark edge highlight. I... You know, I'm not still not sure after all these years of painting what I prefer. I've gone for the smoother look on this one, you might notice. I think in general I prefer that, but uh, possibly it, it depends on the model because because this model has such a lot of other stuff that is essentially edge highlighted and has sharp transitions that I probably subconsciously, even though I didn't realize it, felt that I wanted to make the cloak look smoother to contrast that. Anyway, that's him. I'll put some pics at the end. Let's see what little I have gotten done on the others. Anyway, we've got Balthazar here. Still not much done on him. And he's got exactly the same issue as Crown in that there's only a few areas. There's the robe, bits of robe and the cloak that I can do some actual, what I call actual painting on. Everything else is just filling in the fields with, there's some green fields and some, there's gonna be some white and there's gonna be some purple. And uh, as I said, it's just paint by numbers and it's kind of boring to be honest. But, you know, I mean, uh, I, I, I consider uh, your average space marine to be more fun to paint. There's fewer details on it, but that actually makes it more interesting because that means I have to do some actual work and I have to put some actual thought into it. Here it's just a matter of, oh god, here's another detail, what color do I pick for that? And yeah. Anyway, don't want to sound too depressed. Uh, hopefully he'll be done by next week. Uh, Cthulhu, not a whole lot has happened on Cthulhu. 
you can see he's still the same basic green. I went in a little bit and strengthened the yellow on the belly. And I've done a little bit of highlighting on the wing membranes. And that's about it. Um, I need time to sort of focus fully on this dude to, to, to do him justice. But the process is going to be first even more highlights by brush and then toning it all down again with glazes and and uh, shades and washes um, for for the basic skin and wing areas and then i'll have to think all the spikes and claws and tentacles are will be painted separately you know in their own process and it's going to take time simply because it is he's so big. There's such a lot of area to cover. Every step will will take much longer than on a smaller mini. But this is at least a fun project. This this guy I'm really enjoying painting. So that's good. You should enjoy your work. <laughs> uh, let's see if I've managed to start prepping something else. This is a selection of minis that I have primed with a sort of pre-shaded primer layer, as is my wont these days, going from a dark gray to a white. The white is very thin, so it it sort of blends in. It's it's not it's not a, a sharp white. Uh, I don't know if you can see the transitions, but these are the all the resin. Well, rather, the, the Infernals that came from the Dungeon Saga Kickstarter. You can tell because they have these bases. Um, these flagstone bases. Which uh, you, you can't really see now, but I've, as I mentioned last time, I pinned them, their feet to the bases instead of using the holes, and I filled in the holes that were there with some plastic putty. Now, the exception is this guy. This guy came with a base like these, the 25 millimeter base, but it was way too small. So I scrounged around, I found a square plastic base in my collection that I had used that was the appropriate size. And I used my Happy Seppuku basing stamps to create a flagstone texture. It's not an exact match, but oh well. Um, now, what are these guys? These are not from, from Mantic or Dungeon Saga anyway. These I discovered lying around on my table. Um, it was a little baggy with bonus minis that I got with my latest order from uh, Hassle Free. No, no, sorry, sorry, sorry. From Heresy. I can't get those confused because uh, they're both British companies. Uh, and start with H. Uh, and these were all also resin. And these are Chaos Grubs. So I put these three on round bases like the, I, I painted some of these before I think they came with another kit of cultists um, so I'll try to look at how those were painted and this guy was kind of new some sort of dude so I used the, the spare flagstone base that was originally for this mini to base this guy he he's sort of rearing up I don't know if that's intentional or it's simply that the legs were uh, unintentionally of uneven length uh, and it, it, it was it's hard to reposition resin I with this guy you can tell sort of that his spear is kind of bent it was even more bent I repositioned it using some warm water and then some cold water but it bent itself a little bit after that uh, and I said I can't be bothered to keep doing this it'll it can be a little bent that doesn't matter um, similarly, this sword, uh, I've, I don't know if you can tell, I've fixed it a little bit, but it's still a little curved, sort of, but, eh, you'll mostly be looking at it from above like this, and you won't notice it. And, yeah, so... This is the next stage of painting that I'm going to do is to start 
layering on some color on these. Okay, so for the rest of these mantics, these are from the Kings of War line. Uh, what, what I'm concerned about is these bases. Now, these are very thin and they're extremely large. Here's a body from a Moloch. You'll notice it's very similar to, to the resin version. And he, he looks very lonely on this really, really big base. A lot of empty space to fill. Yeah, maybe if I do something scenic with it, build it up a little bit. It's not going to match the other one. Um, I'm not sure why it is this way. I suppose this is for the Kings of War game, that, according to the rules, they're supposed to have this sort of footprint. And, and this guy is flipping huge face. Uh, again, I'll, I'll have to look at it when it's assembled, whether that sort of size base is appropriate or whether I want to, um, I don't know, maybe bring a round base of some kind. I, you know, I tend to prefer those in any case. Um, so there's, there's, there's three of these guys, one of the huge guys and, and one small guy. He's, uh, I don't know, some sort of tweet, some sort of little fire spirit, and he's on the, the, the really small square 20 mil base, and that's probably okay. Um, no, here's another small guy. There's two small guys. Huh. What do you know? Um, I keep getting surprised by what's in my boxes. Um, what else do we have here? Oh, yeah, we, we have... The remaining Dungeon Saga resins, which are four meter figures. And I think one of them has seems to have a bigger base. Well, we'll look at that. I mean, I'm, I'm gonna... First of all, next in line is these metal guys. Because they are infernal, so they will match uh, what I've been painting uh, before. Now these these guys are not infernals. They're just some sort of various undead. So I'm pushing them further back in the queue. We'll see when I get around to them. Um, yeah. Well, just a few random thoughts. Let's move on. All right. So the flow of new arrivals has started again. I've unfortunately. Um, not been able to resist buying more stuff. And this box is a delivery from Spellcrow Miniatures. And what I was actually after was these bits. Uh, these are torsos and these are legs for their so-called Space Knights. And the reason for this is that I had a lot of bits left over from my Space Marines boxes, both Chaos and Normal, but they're all arms and heads and weapons. No torsos or legs left. But I thought I can get wring some more use out of it if I buy these sort of third-party aftermarket uh, pieces and I combine them it, to some sort of unholy Frankenstein's monsters of space soldiers of some kind. But that's a future project. <clears throat> but while I was on their website, I... Oh, this is some sort of ad. Uh, don't need that. Um, I decided to try some of their own miniatures as well. And what I found were... Well... This I did not order. This is, a, as it says, a freebie. Huh. They gave me an extra mini. Well, thanks, Spellcrow. I don't know what it is. It's some sort of dude with... Some sort of barbarian with a staff? Because yeah, he's got just got a loincloth and a cloak and otherwise... and boots and otherwise he's bare-skinned on chest and legs and he has a beard but no hair on his head and the staff has like metal things at each end so it's... I don't know... any historical weapon looks like that but it looks neat. But anyway, what I got were four minis um, that I did order. This is a Tigerian with two-handed weapons. So this is sort of a tiger 
man, sort of anthropomorphic dude. And I think one of the others is supposed to be a... I think this resin miniature is also a Tigerian. Well, well, these two are humans, so I got one resin and one metal of each. This is human with sword. Yes, very, very imaginative name. And this looks like another human with a sword and shield. This looks like sort of a knight. And I, I just got a, a small selection uh, of their stuff just to try them out, to see what their, uh, their range is and uh, what their casting and sculpting is like. And so far it looks pretty good. We'll have to see whenever I get around to painting them whether they also paint up well. So that was this week's episode. I hope you enjoyed it. Click like, subscribe, comment, and I will see you next week. Until then, I'm Dr. Ian, and I'm signing off.